What's going on YouTube? Today I bring you my number 23 power rank team for the 2021 NFL season. And as you saw by the title, that is the New York Giants. This is a team that, like a lot of these other teams that we've been doing recently, they have very, very bright future. They have a very bright future, but there's just a few too many things wrong with the team as of right now, but I do like the direction. So let's hop into it. Uh, starting off with the receivers. This is a very nice receiving room. Um, you know, they signed Kenny Galladay over from the uh, from the Lions, which is obviously a great receiver to have, but it, will he stay healthy? That's obviously part of it. You know, Kenny Galladay has always dealt with some injuries throughout his career, so he's a fantastic guy to have if he does stay healthy. Um, you know, beyond him, you have Darius Slayton, who I was very impressed with what he did last year. I think now that you make him a number two, um, to, especially to a guy like Kenny Galladay this year, again, as long as he's healthy, I think Slayton could emerge as one of the better, like, number two receivers in the NFL. Your number 30 is probably going to be Kadarius Toney, and I mean, this guy is just a highlight reel waiting to happen. He makes he makes you miss with such an incredible ease. Um, to where he's, here's your number three. Like, he's probably your starting slot guy. He's an incredible guy to have as your starting slot. Um, you know, beyond those guys, you have John Ross, who, you know, although he never really panned out in the NFL, is still an elite speed threat. Dante Pettis, Sterling Shepard, uh, Kelvin Benjamin. Like, there is some really nice depth as well as some very nice top talent in this room. To be honest, this is one of the better receiving rooms in the NFL. I don't know if it's quite the best. I don't know if it edges out, like, you know, the Buccaneers or the Cowboys, but... This is probably number three or number four. So, you know, because of that, I'm going to give this an A here. Um, this is an incredible room, and, like, it's it's great for Daniel Jones to have him. We'll get to him in a second, but I don't know if they're going to play that well because of Daniel Jones. But like I said, we'll get to him in a second. Uh, left tackle. Um, you got Andrew Thomas, who was pretty god-awful in his rookie season. He uh, showed steady development throughout the course of the season, though, so uh, he could potentially be one of those breakout guys this year. I don't see it. Um, you know, tackle is a position that might take you a few years before you really get going, um, but there was at least some good development last year, so there's enough there to not worry yet about Andrew Thomas. Um, I don't know if he's going to be great this year, but um, he should at least be improved. I mean, you could really put Nate Soldier as a backup, like at left or right tackle. Um, I, I think I feel it was more of a right tackle, so switch Nate, Nate Soldier over to the right tackle. Um, so here you got Andrew Thomas and uh, really no one behind him. Just because I don't expect him to do anything really special this year. He was pretty bad in his rookie year. There's no depth there. This is going to be a D. Um, grade, but again, like Andrew Thomas still does hold a lot of upside. I mean, he was selected very highly for a reason. He was very good at Georgia. Um, and it just, I might just be a matter of taking a few years. It could just be a similar situation like Garrett Bowles. He might suck for his first three, four seasons, but just, just wait to, for, just wait for his fifth. Just wait. Maybe he might even get, be go, get going for that. So, um, left guard. I feel like here, um, you'd probably be starting Zach Fulton. I, you know, Shane Lemieux is a guy that I do like, but I don't know if he should be starting. Um, Zach Fulton isn't exactly the best guy in the world either, but he, I do think he's at least a bit more uh, capable than Shane Lemieux at this time. Um, so in that case, he switched Zach Fulton over there to left guard. Shane Lemieux is backup. Um, that room is going to get you probably a D plus. I do like the upside on Lemieux. Um, and Fulton's like, again, he's not the worst guy in the world, but he's definitely far from the best. Um, yeah, so that'll probably get you a D plus there. Um, center, you've got Nick Gates, who's actually a really solid guy. He's a guy that flies under the radar a lot. And really, Nick Gates is actually a very, very solid uh, center. No one really behind him, but, like, Nick Gates and himself, like, he, he gets a, a decent grade here just because, he, again, he's one of the more underrated players in the NFL. That's going to get you a nice C there. Um, he's still not great or anything, but he is definitely better than people give him credit for. But just because of the lack of depth, he's not anyone special. It's going to be a C here for the center position. Um, right guard, you got Will Hernandez. I mean, Chad Slade's okay. Um... But he's not, I mean, he's not one of the better backups in the NFL. Will Hernandez, though, is a serviceable enough guy. 
Um, he, I wouldn't consider him solid. I really wouldn't even. I definitely wouldn't consider him good. But he is a solid starter. No, I just said he's not solid. He is a capable starter um, with um, a, a maybe capable backup. That's gonna get you a D minus here. It's not quite an F. Will Hernandez is not that bad. Chase Slade, just Chad Slade is not that bad. But it's it's just not it's not a good room. Uh, and then right tackle, you got Matt Pert starting. Really, you could start Nate Soldier over here. Oops. You could start Nate Soldier over here if you wanted. But I feel like you'd probably be starting Matt Pert because he actually showed some really nice things uh, last year. He could be a potential breakout candidate as well this year. Um, you know, the offensive line is going to be a big one of the big X factors besides Daniel Jones this year, obviously, because um, there's a lot of guys to where it's like, are they going to break out this year? Shane Lemieux, um, Tom, Andrew Thomas, Matt Pert. So you know if, if all three of these guys just happen to break out. I mean, you've all of a sudden got a really, really good offensive line. Um, I don't expect that to happen, but I think it, there's a good chance at least one of these guys will break out this year. And if I'm going to bet on any of them, it would be Matt Pert. I really did love what he showed last year. Uh, and I think if you have Nate Soldier behind him, you have a guy with a ton of upside right here who could break out and actually a pretty decent backup. That's going to get you a C plus there. Um, overall, this offensive line, it does need some work, but there are some really nice pieces set in place here. Um, you know, again, Nick Gates is a very, um, he's a solid guy. You know, people don't give him enough credit. Will Hernandez is not the worst guy in the world. And if these th three guys break out, like, you know, you've, you've got yourself a really good offensive line there, but it is a big X factor for this team. Um, so moving on to the tight end room. The tight end room here is really, I mean, whatever. Evan Ingram is like one of the most overrated players in football. Um, you know, it's weird how I saw so many Giants fans that just absolutely loved Evan Ingram and they defended him to their grave. He was a pro bowler and he was like easily the, the dumbest pro bowl pick. I mean, it, that all, all that did was prove the pro bowl is completely a popularity contest. Um, he was horrible last year. He had some incredibly bad drops. There were a ton of plays where he bobbled the ball up in the air and it resulted in an interception, which is part of the reason why I I, I have this team hired because I think Daniel Jones is a possible breakout candidate this, as well this year um, because there were a lot of interceptions, especially by Evan Ingram, where they, were, they just got tipped because Evan Ingram doesn't know how to catch a ball and it resulted in a pick. Um, is he athletic? Yes, and he's he's shown some nice things in the past, but he was he was bad last year, and maybe he has a return to form this year. I don't see it. I've never been a big fan of him in the first place, so last year did not help that. Um, you know, Kyle Rudolph behind him is uh, is a good backup. I mean, he obviously showed he was starting to decline there in Minnesota. So who knows? Maybe he has a resurgence. That's the big thing with especially this Giants offense is it's a bunch of what ifs. What if Kenny Galladay stays healthy? What if this offensive line explodes this year? What if Daniel Jones finally gets it? What if Evan Ingram returns to form? What if Saquon Barkley stays healthy? Like there's a lot of different what ifs to this offense. And it's it's hard like it's it's not a good chance but there is a legit chance that this offense clicks this year and they turn into one of the most competitive teams in the nfl because if you really look at this roster and again and again we'll go over the defense in a second but if you really just look at this roster even just this this offense this is an offense loaded with young talent it's just when are they gonna break out if it all happens this year or most of it they turn into a very competitive team especially given the division they're in so this, this Giants offense, I like it, um, and we're not done yet. We still haven't even gone over the quarterback and running back, but I'm just I'm, I'm already giving my breakdown of the whole thing. But it really, it, like Evan Ingram is one of those big X factors as well. Just pointing out the fact that like a, almost this entire offense is X factors. You know what if? What if? Um, but the tight end room, it's going to get a, a C plus for me. Ingram is still like he's not. I don't expect him to be as bad as he was last year. But I also don't expect him to be great this year. Um, and then Rudolph, again, he's like a capable backup. I don't see him like taking another big decline or anything. But not that he even really declined that much last year. It just, he's, you know, showing the ages of the little bit kind of there. But uh, yeah, quarterback, Daniel Jones, frustrating player because he's definitely got the talent. Um you know, I've actually, I was one of the big believers in Daniel Jones for a while. You know, obviously when in the when the Giants took him back in 2018, fans hated the pick. Like, they hated it. Was it 2018? Yeah, it was 2018, right? Maybe it was 2019. Uh, yeah, it was 2019, I think. But regardless, fans hated the pick. 
And I was one of those guys where it was like, oh, you know, it'd be funny if, like, he proves all wrong. And then the more I thought about it, I was like, actually, yeah, there's a lot to like about this guy. And there is. I mean, Daniel Jones has a fantastic deep ball. Like, his accuracy can be spot on at times. Um, he's actually got a decent processor. And he's, he's actually kind of athletic. Um, you know, just look at that bit long run he had. Uh, he, he tripped in the end, but, like, it's a quarterback running that long that doesn't normally run. Uh, there's a lot to actually like about Daniel Jones. There's just some concerns. I think a big part of it's just the fact that, again, this offensive line has been horrible for a while. He hasn't kind of had these kind of weapons before. Um, and obviously having a healthy Saquon back would help a ton. I think D Daniel Jones, you know, it's... I, I feel he's another one of those breakout candidates. Like I just said, he's another one of those big X factors for this entire offense. So we'll have to see. But if he puts it together, that is a big big help for the entire offense uh and then mike glennon and clayton thorson behind him they're they're whatever i mean they're, they're no, i wouldn't even consider them capable backups so you take the fact that daniel jones is a breakout candidate that has shown some nice things but has not put it together yet and then some uh bad depth that's gonna get you a c minus for this room but if daniel jones puts it together that makes this team so much better um so much better and then running back, uh, this is a pretty solid uh, running back room. Saquon Barkley, obviously one of the best running backs we've seen out of the draft in the past, you know, 10 years. Um, he is an extremely talented dude. Um, there were a few injury concerns, obviously, with last year. And even before he got hurt, like in the few touches he got, he didn't even look good in his first game before he did get injured. Um but I expect a big bounce back here from him. I mean, he's this incredibly talented guy. He is like if if you need if you if you if you forget how talented Saquon Barkley is, just go back and watch literally any game that wasn't in the 2020 season um, because the, the dude's insanely talented. And obviously, you all know that. But uh, behind him, Devonte Booker, who is a pretty capable running back. He's not the best backup guy in the world anymore. Uh, he's a little bit past his prime, but he, he's a serviceable Elijah Penny, whatever is your number three, and then Gary Brightwell, whatever is, you know, kind of your young guy, but you've got your young guy here with Saquon. Um, just an insanely talented guy, and, and another one of those X-Factors. Does he stay healthy? Does he return to kind of that 2018 form? Um, just another one of those big factors, and again, like, if, if somehow every single one of these guys were to put it together this year, you're looking at a team that is legitimately co competing for a Super Bowl. That is how good this team is. But, you know, it's just, I don't, I, I mean, it's very unrealistic for everyone to click. But even if a few of these guys do, if Daniel Jones clicks, that helps. If some of the offensive lines guy, even one of the offensive line guys, it, there's a lot of what ifs here. This offense is a big what if, but what if they play good? Well, you're looking at competing for a Super Bowl, to be honest. That's why they're at 23. Um, but we haven't even talked about the defense yet, so stop tar talking about this defense. Um, one defensive end room, really good. Uh, Leonard Williams was fantastic last year. I, this guy was just, oh my god, he, he was great. Um, so hopefully he can do that again. Uh, he was a big reason why this, uh, why this defense was as good as they were last year. Uh, BJ Hill behind him, pretty decent backup, but you know, Fantastic guy. I want to see him do it again. Uh, pretty good backup. That's going to get you a B plus for that room. I just want to see Williams do it again, but he was fantastic last year. Uh, defensive tackle. You're probably starting uh, Danny Shelton here, who is uh, whatever. He's I'm not really he shouldn't be a starter at this point in his career. Uh, and then some bad depth behind him. Uh, yeah, not very good compared to this last room. That's going to get you probably a D minus there. Again, not quite enough. Danny Shelton isn't that bad, but uh, it's not the best world room in the world. And then the opposite defensive end room, uh, you're starting Dexter Lawrence. I'm not a big fan of Lawrence. Never have been. Uh, never liked the pick. So, um, you know, it, it's it's whatever. Um, I do like Ellerson Smith, though. I actually really do like him as the backup. I think he has, has a legit chance to take over Dexter Lawrence in, say, like a year. Um you have a, a meh starter and a, a young guy with a ton of potential, and uh, that's going to get you a C for this room. It is a meh room. <clears throat> RJ McIntosh is uh, whatever, too. Um, so talking about this kind of like uh, outside linebacker group, the Giants do like to run that kind of weird defense where it's like, you know, stack everyone in the box. Um, Aziz Ojolari was my number one edge in the class. 
he ended up falling to the second round. Um, I still really don't know why. I think he was dealing with a bit of knee issues, I think, but like I don't see that's enough to drop him to the second round. Um, I don't think he's quite as talented as, say, like a Jalen Phillips, but I think the way that he uses like that strength and explosiveness combination. He reminds me a lot of Von Miller. So if the Giants get themselves a Von Miller here, I mean, Von Miller and Leonard Williams on the same team. Oh my God. Um, but I really do love Aziz Ojolari. I think he'll be a great fit there for this Giants defense. And uh, I think he'll be great even as rookie year. Um, Ryan Anderson across from him, whatever. Uh, you know, not really someone that should be a starter beyond that. Like the depth, I mean, a feedy Oda Ningbo, whatever. Um, Carter Coughlin, really no depth here. And I do like Aziz Ojolari, but at the end of the day, he's still a rookie. Um, it's very rare that a rookie makes that kind of an impact. Um, I don't think he's like that special of a talent. Uh, and really the, the guy across from him is, isn't that good. So this is going to get a D plus for right now. But uh, obviously, again, it's a young room and I love Ojolari, but it's just for right now, it's not the best room in the world. Um, but it doesn't always need to be just the way that they run that defense in general. But it, it can hurt them at times. But uh, And then kind of like that middle linebacker room. Blake Martinez, never been a fan. Um, he completely, his way of playing is the tackles. That That is literally all he's good for is tackling. Because I will admit, he is actually a very good tackler. But he is sucky in coverage and like a horrible run defender. Now, luckily for him, the Giants know exactly how to use him. So he doesn't like come off as playing that bad but in reality you put him in almost any other defense and he's one of the worst linebackers in football so he's a player that gets elevated because of the team and the system he's on otherwise he he's a horrible player um again besides being a decent tackler lorenzo carter tay crowder uh, Reggie Ragland. You know, Reggie Ragland's probably actually going to be starting across from uh, Aziz now that I think about it. And he's a bit better than at Ryan Anderson, but he's not any really more better. He, he's a bit better. He's not that much better. Um, but, you know, Tay Crowder, Lorenzo Carter, Blake Martinez, it makes up for a very meh room. But I, it, it gets elevated a little bit just because, again, Martinez isn't basically the perfect situation for him. So it, it's also going to be a C here for me. It's just it's a very meh room. Uh, cornerback. This this group. Uh, oh wow, this group. Um, first off, you know James Bradbury enjoyed a fantastic season last year. Um, he was one of the best corners in football, especially at the start. He cooled down a little bit towards the end, but he was amazing to start off. Um, you know, so hopefully he keeps that up because that would be another great piece for this defense. Obviously, uh, your number two is probably going to be Adoree Jackson. Um, who was showing a little bit of regression in Tennessee, but he could definitely bounce back this year, especially as like that number two. Um, you know, I think there is some potential there. Darnay Holmes was one of my favorite picks when he got drafted. I think the Giants is a, a perfect fit for him, and he has shown some really nice things. So I love me some Darnay Holmes. Um, they picked up Rodarius Williams, who which was who was one of my deep sleepers uh, in this year's draft class. I really love Rodarius Williams as well. I think he's another great piece to add onto this defense. Uh, Sam Beal is a fantastic depth piece. Isaac Yidam is good enough as a depth piece. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of Aaron Robinson. I thought he played, he, he's a really sluggish corner. So I was not a big fan of him, but I think again, as like this, this depth piece, this is one of the best corner rooms in the NFL. Um, it, it's fantastic to be honest. And, and they just, they just go after guys that I like. I like Sam Beal. I like Rodarius Williams. Like I, I like Darnay Holmes. I love these guys. So I don't know, but whatever they do, I think the same way. And I love this corner room. It's it's fantastic. Um, it's gonna get an A. It's a, an amazing room, and it would be a plus if uh, if I knew James Bradbury was gonna play the same way he did this year next year. Um, if he does, it's an A plus. This is an incredible room. Um, free safety. Logan Ryan was fine last year. Uh, I, I don't think he was great or anything, but he was serviceable enough. Uh, Xavier McKinney behind him, though, I do love. I always love, you know, again, I, this team just kind of drafts the way I think, I guess. But uh, Xavier McKinney, I was a big fan of him coming out of Alabama. I think, again, he's a great fit on this defense, and I could see him taking over uh, Logan Ryan's job as soon as this year. He's an insanely athletic and talented individual. Uh, so, you know, that room is probably going to get yourself a, a B- minus right there. Uh, Logan Ryan's not anyone special, but I do love the upside of McKinney, and, and Ryan's at least serviceable. Uh, and then strong safety, Jabril Peppers, 
is a fine enough safety, but once again, you have a safety that I like. They like I liked Julian Love coming out of college, and I think again he's another one of those guys that as soon as this year could take over Pepper's job. Um, for some reason, this team just drafts players I like. Um, this defense is incredibly talented, uh, and there's not as many what ifs. It's more of like, is he going to play on that same level? And even if he doesn't, if he's a little bit not as good. That's fine because the level that that um, that Bradbury and Williams played last year was just incredible. So even if they play like near that, that's great. Obviously, I love a lot of these great young depth pieces everywhere. Love Aziz Ojolari, Rodarius Williams, Xavier McKinney, Julian Love. You know, I love I love a lot of this defense. So overall, this defense it's it's very very good. Um, it's top five really just depends on the offense but before we talk about that as a whole let's get on to the special teams uh graham gano whatever i mean you know it'd be nice to still have um uh rojas but obviously he has a few off field issues gano is a good kicker though um riley dixon is also a good punter and i mean your return man probably gonna be uh Kadarius tony uh like i said he's just a very speedy um, very good at making you miss guys. So I'd imagine Tony is definitely going to be their kick returner. But yeah, overall, like this team, also Casey Creeder, best long snapper in the NFL, fight me. Um, yeah, overall, this team, it's incredible. It's it's loaded with young talent. Um, I like Joe Judge, Judge as a coach. I think he is, is a guy that can lead this team to victories. Um, this defense is incredible. The special teams is really good. It, it's really about the offense this year. Will this guy stay healthy? Will the offensive line improve? Will Daniel Jones show out? Will Evan Ingram return to form? Will Saquon stay healthy? Again, it's very unlikely that all of that happens, but even if some of it happens, they become a very competitive team. Like, I think Washington is another one of the great teams. We'll talk about them later uh, in another video, but like, you, ha you have the Cowboys and the Eagles in the division. It's still one of the easier divisions in the NFL. So, you know, this is a team that like, if if things click on offense, I mean, they're competing for a Super Bowl, like legitimately. I'm, maybe that sounds stupid to some of you, but there's a reason they're at 23. Because even though that's kind of a low ranking, if some of this stuff goes right for the offense, this is a team that is legitimately a playoff competitor. And if by some miracle, all of this clicks, they're competing for a Super Bowl. And that is why they're at 23. Um, but we, well, let's go look at the schedule though and talk about more of the coaching and culture. And uh, taking a look here at their schedule, I mean, it's it's not as tough as some of the others in the league, which is definitely going to help this team in any case of a breakout or, you know, uh, surprise competitiveness. I mean, again, there's just definitely a lot more, you know, toss-up games because, again, like, as of right now with the offense that the way it is, they're still one of, you know, the lesser good teams in the NFL. Um, the only games I would consider easy games are probably the Eagles uh, twice and... That's about it. Toss-up games, I mean, the Falcons, Cowboys, Panthers, Raiders, Dolphins, um, you know, those games, the Bears, those games all become toss-ups, you know? And so a lot of those are obviously winnable. And if this team improves, like, honestly, most of these games, besides probably like the Chiefs, Buccaneers, and Rams, are all winnable for this team if they do improve so they're a scary team because like tr they're just a click they're just a click away from being one of the best teams in the nfl they've got that kind of a roster that youth that talent that coaching that's something we haven't talked about yet like i i know i said i liked um joe judge but i i do like i think he's a guy that can lead this team to wins i think he's a smart coach i like the culture that they have here with the giants like there's a lot to like about this team. Real, like the one what if is just the offense. And I think the biggest of them all is Daniel Jones, because obviously it's great to have a quarterback, even if the rest of the offense doesn't click as much, um, you know? And so it, that's, that's the big X factor is Daniel Jones. Um, if he, if he figures it out, this team is competing for a playoff spot. And if the offense figures it out, they're competing for a Super Bowl. So that's why they're at 23, because, you know, even though they're one of the lesser good teams, this is a team that truly is just about connecting it right now, because if they do, they are scary. And pretty much every team that plays them better watch out. Um, but that is the number 23 power rank team for the 2021 NFL season. If you guys liked the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you guys so much for watching. 2020 out, 22 out tomorrow, and I will see all you guys in the next video.
拜拜。